Welcome. Today I'm in Pitcombe, a village just outside Bruton. Although restrictions are changing, uh, I am still the only person allowed to be present. Uh, and while this makes it a very different kind of service from one when we can all be here, I still hope we can share a sense of spiritual communion together. This church is dedicated to St. Leonard, who lived around the year 500 near Limoges in France. After he died, his cult spread across Europe, uh, and this church is one of over 170 in England dedicated in his name. There was an older church on this site, uh, and the only part of that that remains is the tower. The rest, the nave, the chancel, and the vestry, were rebuilt in 1857. And the rear ados, behind the altar, was added at that time. It's carved in lime wood and comes from Oberammergau and shows Jesus at the Last Supper with his disciples. A fitting backdrop to today's service of Holy Communion from the Book of Common Prayer, 1662. We, we've just heard the hymn tune Gerontius, which is often used to sing Newman's hymn, Praise to the Holiest in the Height. And the second verse says this, O oh, loving wisdom of our God, when all was sin and shame, a second Adam to the fight and to the rescue came. Join me now as we prepare to meet the risen Lord in word and sacrament. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Almighty God, unto whom all hearts be open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of thy Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love thee and worthily magnify thy holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, with all thy mind, and with all thy strength. This is the first and great commandment. And the second is like unto it, namely this, Thou shalt love thy neighbour as thyself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Lord, have mercy upon us, and write all these thy laws in our hearts, we beseech thee. Almighty and everlasting God, we are taught by thy holy word that the hearts of rulers are in thy governance, and that thou dost dispose and turn them as it seemeth best to thy godly wisdom. We humbly beseech thee so to dispose and govern the heart of Elizabeth, thy servant, our queen and governor, that in all her thoughts, words and works, she may ever seek thy honour and glory and study to preserve thy people committed to her charge in wealth, peace, and godliness. 
Grant this, O merciful Father, for thy dear Son's sake, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Today's collect for the third Sunday after Trinity. O Lord, we beseech thee mercifully to hear us, and grant that we, to whom thou hast given an hearty desire to pray, may by thy mighty aid be defended and comforted in all dangers and adversities. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. have one reading, today's Gospel. The Gospel is written in the 15th chapter of, of St. Luke, beginning at the first verse. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Then drew near unto Jesus the publicans and sinners for to hear him. And the Pharisees and scribes murmured, saying, This man receiveth sinners, and eateth with them. And he spake this parable unto them, saying, What man of you, having an hundred sheep, if he lose one of them, doth not leave the ninety and nine in the wilderness, and go after that which is lost, until he find it? And when he hath found it, he layeth it on his shoulders, rejoicing. And when he cometh home, he calleth together his friends and neighbours, saying unto them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep which was lost. I say unto you, that likewise joy shall be in heaven over one sinner that repenteth, more than over ninety and nine just persons which need no repentance. Either, what woman having ten silver pieces, if she lose one piece, doth not light a candle and sweep the house and seek diligently till she find it? And when she hath found it, she calleth her friends and her neighbours together, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the piece which I had lost. Likewise I say unto you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner that repenteth. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. There we heard Jesus tell two parables about loss, a lost sheep and a lost coin. Crowds were pressing around Jesus at the time, some wanting to hear his teaching. The disciples were there to receive instruction. The scribes and Pharisees were there to keep tabs on this radical teaching. But there were many others there who didn't belong anywhere. No one else wanted them. No one wanted to hang out with them. Living on the fringes, these are all lumped together as tax collectors and sinners. Hence, too, the accusation from the Pharisees that Jesus, he mixes with these people, with this riffraff. He even eats with them. The scribes and Pharisees also see that as a religious teacher, Jesus is suggesting that these disreputable, marginalized people have a place with God's chosen people. Aware of their criticism, Jesus tells these parables of the lost. He actually tells three parables of the lost. Uh, the third one is of the lost son, but that's for another day. Shepherds of the time were considered the lowest of the low. Only one person was lower than a shepherd, 
and that was an unemployed shepherd. And for the sake of any modern shepherds who might just drop in on this, uh, today's shepherds, I have to make quite clear, are not at all like that. These were wild men who lived out on the hillsides, unable to observe the religious and social niceties over cleanliness. These were regarded as scum, outcast, drifters, often hired on a very casual basis. And it's quite possible that such a shepherd would not risk the 99 and go back and look for one lost sheep. What if the wolf gets them while he's gone? Jesus is saying that God is like that the good shepherd who searches for the lost and who throws a party when he brings them home. With the woman who has lost one of her precious coins, we are not talking small change. This loss could mean household ruin, social disgrace, certainly. No surprise, then, that she turns the house upside down, sweeping out all the dark corners of her windowless home, and at last, Sifting through the dusty rushes on the floor, there it is. She is so relieved at finding it that rather extravagantly she invites her neighbours in for a party. A sign of God's generosity. Because while these parables seem to be about loss, really, Jesus is telling us what God is like. He seeks the lost. And there is rejoicing in heaven when they are found. Expressed in the hymn Amazing Grace, I once was lost, but now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Such is our God. Not remote, far above us, impassive observer of the frail human, human frailties. And what are they up to down there now? But actively engaged in loving and nurturing the creation and everything in it, even looking for the lost. And what of us? Are we to be like the sheep that wanders off? Or are we to be actively seeking like the shepherd? Should we be passive like the inanimate lost coin or actively engaged like the woman? We are to be seekers, searching for a world of fresh values, working to promote the loving qualities, the open attitudes that contribute to building the new world that Jesus spoke about. Building the new world that Jesus calls the kingdom of God. Elsewhere he says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all the rest will be added to you. Amen. Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But the one who does the will of my Father, which is in heaven.
so to our prayers. As we call to mind our own particular fears and anxieties. Anxieties about the present and concerns for the future. And we pray for all who work to relieve suffering throughout the world, remembering especially all our key workers, NHS workers, and all the others we depend upon for the necessities of life, the people we care about, those we are separated from, and so let us pray for the whole state of Christ Church, militant here <coughs> in earth. Almighty and ever-living God, who by thy holy apostle has taught us to make prayers and supplications and to give thanks for all men, we humbly beseech thee most mercifully to accept our alms and oblations and to receive these our prayers which we offer unto thy divine majesty, beseeching thee to inspire continually the universal church with the spirit of truth, unity, and concord, and grant that all they that do confess thy holy name may agree in the truth of thy holy word and live in unity and godly love. We beseech thee also to save and defend all Christian kings, princes and governors, and specially thy servant Elizabeth, our Queen, that under her we may be godly and quietly governed. And grant unto her whole counsel, and to all that are put in authority under her, that they may truly and indifferently minister justice, to the punishment of wickedness and vice, and to the maintenance of thy true religion and virtue. Give grace, O Heavenly Father, to all bishops and curates, that they may both by their life and doctrine set forth thy true and lively word, and rightly and duly administer thy holy sacraments. And to all thy people, Give thy heavenly grace, and specially to this congregation here present, that with meek heart and due reverence we may hear and receive thy holy word, truly serving thee in holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. And we most humbly beseech thee of thy goodness, O Lord, to comfort and succour all them who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. And we also bless thy holy name, for all thy servants departed this life in thy faith and fear, beseeching thee to give us grace, so to follow their good examples, that with them we may be partakers of thy heavenly kingdom. Grant this, O Father, for Jesus Christ's sake, our only mediator and advocate. Amen. <coughs> Ye that do truly and earnestly repent you of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbours and intend to lead a new life following the commandments of God and walking from henceforth in his holy ways, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comfort and make your humble confession to Almighty God. Almighty God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, maker of all things, judge of all men, we acknowledge and bewail our manifold sins and wickedness, 
which we from time to time most grievously have committed by thought, word and deed against thy divine majesty, provoking most justly thy wrath and indignation against us. We do earnestly repent and are heartily sorry for these our misdoings. The remembrance of them is grievous unto us, the burden of them is intolerable. Have mercy upon us. Have mercy upon us, most merciful Father, for thy Son, our Lord Jesus Christ's sake. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may, may hereafter serve and please thee in newness of life, to the honour and glory of thy name, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <coughs> Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of his great mercy hath promised forgiveness of sins to all them that with hearty repentance and true faith turn unto him, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and bring you to everlasting life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. <clears throat> Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ saith unto all that truly turn to him. Come unto me, all that travail and are heavy laden, and I will refresh you. So God loved the world, that he gave his only begotten Son, to the end that all that believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul saith. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners. Hear also what St John saith. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the propitiation for our sins. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is very meet, right, and our bounden duty that we should at all times and in all places give thanks unto thee, O Lord, Holy Father, almighty, everlasting God. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify thy glorious name, evermore praising thee and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Glory be to thee. O Lord Most High. <clears throat> we do not presume to come to this thy table, O merciful Lord, trusting in our own righteousness, but in thy manifold and great mercies. We are not worthy so much as to gather up the crumbs under thy table, but thou art the same Lord whose property is always to have mercy. Grant us, therefore, gracious Lord, so to eat, eat the flesh of thy dear Son, Jesus Christ, and to drink his blood, that our sinful bodies may be made clean by his body, and our souls washed through his most precious blood, and that we may evermore dwell in him and he in us. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, who of thy tender mercy didst give thine only Son, Jesus Christ, to suffer death upon the cross for our redemption, who made there by his one oblation of himself once offered a full, perfect and sufficient sacrifice, oblation and satisfaction for the sins of the whole world, and did institute 
and in his holy gospel command us to continue a perpetual memory of that his precious death until his coming again. Hear us, O merciful Father, we most humbly beseech thee, and grant that we receiving these thy creatures of bread and wine, according to thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ's holy institution, in remembrance of his death and passion, may be partakers of his most blessed body and blood. Who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Likewise, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of this, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. Do this as oft as ye shall drink it in remembrance of me. Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ which was given for me preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life I take and eat in remembrance that Christ died for me and feed on him in my heart by faith and thanksgiving the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ shed for me, preserve my body and soul unto everlasting life. I drink this in remembrance that Christ's blood was shed for me. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Almighty and ever-living God, we most heartily thank thee for that thou dost vouchsafe to feed us, who have duly received these holy mysteries with the spiritual food, of the most precious body and blood of thy Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, and dost assure us thereby of thy favour and goodness towards us, <coughs> and that we are very members incorporate in the mystical body of thy Son, which is the blessed company of all faithful people, and are also heirs through hope of thy everlasting kingdom, by the merits of the most precious death and passion of thy dear Son. And we most humbly beseech thee, O Heavenly Father, so to assist us with thy grace, that we may continue in that holy fellowship, and do all such good works as thou hast prepared for us to walk in. 
through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with thee and the Holy Ghost be all honour and glory, world without end. Amen. Glory be to God on high, and in earth peace, good will towards men. We praise thee, we bless thee, we worship thee, we glorify thee. We give thanks to thee for thy great glory, O Lord God, heavenly King, God the Father Almighty. O Lord, the only begotten Son, Jesus Christ. O Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, have mercy upon us. Thou that takest away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. Thou that sittest at the right hand of God the Father, have mercy upon us, for thou only art holy. Thou only art the Lord, thou only, O Christ, with the Holy Ghost, art most high in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Thank you for sharing in this. As we close, the music you hear is the tune to a hymn, Seek Ye First the Kingdom of God and His Righteousness, and all the rest will be added to you. The peace of God, which passeth all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God, and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen.